Welcome to the CompuWare Workbench Host Explorer Introduction Module. Here you will learn how the Host Explorer is used as the starting point for completing many typical ZOS functions from the CompuWare Workbench. To access the Host Explorer, you may click on the Host Explorer icon on the Workbench Welcome screen or if the workbench is already open, from the menu bar, choose Window, then Open Perspective, and choose Host Explorer. This example shows connections to multiple LPARs as well as the user's workstation. The Host Explorer conveniently displays dataset lists, both mainframe and workstation. From there, context menus are used to initiate common file actions. The menu entries are tailored to each selected item. Let's look at some examples. Here, Highlighting the first LPAR connection displays a login dialog box for the mainframe connection. The initial list is shown here. FileAid for DB2 and FileAid for IMS are discussed in detail in separate modules. The list of all ZOS datasets would be huge so filtering is in order. After highlighting the ZOS datasets line, we right-click to display the context menu and choose Add Filter. The Add Filter dialog box appears and a filter is entered. The display expands to show the filter along with the qualifying datasets. Similarly, we highlight the ZOS Unix files line, right-click to display the context menu, then choose Add Filter. When added, as before, the display expands to show the filter and qualifying datasets. Moving down to the workstation area, we expand to display the Drives line, highlight and right-click to display the Context menu, then choose Add Filter. A filter is added for the C drive and the display expands appropriately. Moving back to the ZOS Files area, the highlighted file shown is prefixed by a PDS icon. Upon expansion, the PDS members are displayed. The full PDS maintenance capabilities available here in the Host Explorer are discussed in detail in a separate module. Here, the highlighted file shown is prefixed by the vSAM icon. Right-clicking reveals a context menu much different from those seen previously. Several common file actions are available. Access to the FileAid data editor is provided. Its capabilities are discussed in detail in separate modules. Choosing Allocate Like displays a vSAM file allocation box. The vSAM cluster parameters are pre-filled for convenient modeling. In this example, a sequential file is highlighted. A display of the context menu reveals yet another set of available file actions. Choosing Allocate Like displays a standard dataset allocation box, again with pre-filled parameters. In the final ZOS file example, the highlighted file is prefixed by the migrated icon. 
A display of the context menu shows that the recall option is available. Moving back to the workstation area, we highlight the filter line, then display the context menu, again containing common actions. Highlighting a file, we see that the context menu changes again to allow the appropriate actions. Here are some additional notes regarding the edit in use message, edit exit validation, and support for the double byte character set. First, the edit in use message. In this example, we have highlighted a data set, displayed the context menu, then chosen edit with, then selected the CompuWare editor powered by Slick Edit. The ensuing message, shown here, indicates that the dataset is currently in use and by whom. Moving on to the Edit Exit Validation, the three cases shown will concern record length, invalid characters, and invalid or incomplete placeholders. In the record length case, text has been added at the end of a line. Attempting to save the changed file results in the message shown. In the invalid characters case, a value clause contains invalid characters. Attempting to save the changed file results in the message shown. In the case of the invalid or incomplete placeholders, the intent is to add double byte characters which require delimiters. The cursor is positioned at the desired location for the first delimiter, then the context menu is displayed, and Add Shift Out Placeholder is chosen. Only the left delimiter is inserted. Attempting to save the changed file results in the message shown. Finally, double byte character set support is provided in the Host Explorer and Expediter Eclipse as well. The corresponding language support must be installed in Windows where there is release and version dependency for some features. The Cyrillic keyboard, the Kanji keyboard, and others are all used to input a variety of double byte characters around the world. Display and use will often occur while editing. Let's look at an example. We begin with a standard mainframe login box using the default host code page. Editing a copybook known to contain double byte characters, the display appears to be incorrect. A closer look shows that the non-displayable characters appear as lozenges. A second login is requested, this time with a different host code page. Editing the same copybook now displays the double byte characters correctly, both Cyrillic and Kanji. This concludes this module. Thank you.